In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus is dead, deader than a doornail, and we killed him, stabbing at his warm hands with the stiff nails of indifference, selfishness, pride. We crucify him again and again with our carelessness, our inaffection, our inability to see others as they are. In our isolation, we build castles, brick by brick, isolating ourselves in our pain. But the truth is, we are also up there with him on our crosses. Like the criminals, we're in a grim fellowship. The world's condemned. No one gets out alive. He is crucified, not only by us, but with us. But the truth is that he also did this for us. That is perhaps the hardest of the truths to recognize. That this, this dead God, in doing this for us, he makes a gesture of love. That on that cross with his arms spread, he makes a gesture of love and embrace that it was for us that he died. How do we respond to that? How could we possibly respond to that? What gesture of ours could possibly replicate that embrace? That is the question of Good Friday. That is the question of Easter Sunday. That is the question of all our crucifixions. In what way can we possibly make a gesture sufficient to respond to God's love? Come Sunday, we will cast off all of this pain We will cast off all of this and revel in the joy of the resurrection. But before we get there, in fact, perhaps in order to get there to that joy, we have to sit here at the foot of this cross and to look at it and to see in the crucifixion that we did this to him, that we are there with him, And that he did this for us. And if we can do that, if we can sit at the world's crosses, our own crosses, his cross, we might begin to feel in our own hearts a small piece of what God is doing. And that we might be changed forever in the way that only this story can change us can make us loving and compassionate and, yes, even joyful in the ways only this story could make us. That is my prayer for us on Good Friday.